you join us on another exciting episode of Art House. I'm Melinda Akinlami. A warm welcome on the program today. Eleven young creatives showcase their recent collections at this exhibition in Lagos. Then we have a personal contact with Benedict Pieces at this gallery still in the commercial city of Lagos. We'll see that and more after we hear from our wordsmith for this week. Do stay with us. Our wordsmith for this week is titled, What is Wrong with Peace? by Laefa Egodo. Peace is to peace. The absence of peace is war. This raging storm mounting upon her mind. This battle with anxiety turning into bottles. Bottled up feelings, filling me out till I burst open. No, not bust. Open the world. I am here, but I am not present. Wandering in this sea that seems to swallow, until I gag on this bile of depression. A million streams of thoughts lining my consciousness. I am aware, but I am nowhere. Neither here, nor there. Where can I flee from this world? The absence of peace isn't always war. I am peace, but I am never been still. It's always an eruption within and without. How do I find my pieces? Where so I become a part of this whole? I've stopped searching the outward. I've stopped peering into hollow spaces. Inner peace resides within peace in her world. It's important not to let circumstances weigh you down. Do what makes you smile. Be happy. Don't just exist, live. Just like these group of artists who are showing us their recent body of works in Crossroads, an exhibition organized by SMO Contemporary Art in Lagos. Eleven visual artists, 33 paintings, sculptures and photographs curated by Majid Biga, who is a part of SMO Contemporary Art Team, who addresses the audience on the essence of a group show. Crossword can mean one or two things. It's either a point where two places meet or a point where a critical decision uh, needs to be made. So this year was a crossroad year for me. It was a year that I felt was very pivotal in terms of my growth uh, as an art curator. So I chose to look for artists who I felt could um, represent and very well uh, carry out this theme. With some inspiration in the room. Um, I met four of the artists today. These are young Nigerians, young Africans who have taken upon themselves to tell the African story. You hear about your Basquiat's and Van Gogh and Picasso's and all these people that sell for millions internationally. And people flock to those artists and, and their works. I'm not sure everybody here is going to buy, but how amazing would it be if everything here sold out? With this exhibition, we hope to like speak for the generation. We know that as Lagos is a very um, overpopulated and pressurized place, it ends up making a lot of young Africans feel at a crossroads. So these African artists have used their, their art to um, express this theme and show that there is hope at the end of the tunnel, you know, and that no matter what you are facing in this life, whatever critical decision you have to make, whatever path you have to choose, there are a lot of people who are also facing that similar um, experience and we can all get through it together. Crossroads feel the pulse of these young creatives who bring exciting themes to bear, especially as growing talent navigating the Lagos art scene, which has inspired some of them. 
is titled Fighting Anxiety and it was meant to represent a personal struggle with anxiety and um, I I just needed to express it because it felt like it was something that was eating me up inside a lot based on the fact that I was in a new town, I was away from family, I was still trying to decide my career path and a lot of it became very overwhelming and I it's sometimes it almost felt like it was suffocating and I just needed to exp express that the best way I knew how, which was through my photography. While others explore culture, history, faith and more through their various media of expression. My work is a fusion of history and contemporary times, or modernity as the case may be. Um, basically, my work talks about the interface and the intersection between Christianity and Igbo spirituality. So it's more like um, trying to bring my audience to that fusion, that in as much as we've moved on, and in as much as there's been a paradigm shift in our belief system, in the way we see these two belief systems, I feel we still incorporate things from the past and we practice them in the present. So, and I feel it is worth talking about, it is worth having conversations about. from so many things. I, I don't, will not just um, subject it to just visual art. I get my inspiration from music. I get my inspiration from friends. I get inspiration from you know, my, my brother, my sister. I get so much inspiration from different en en encounters. And I feel like the list is endless, that you can actually draw inspiration from the most mundane things if you just decide to focus, if you decide to just pay attention. The work here is uh, titled Man and Destiny, and uh, I'm coming from a Yoruba angle, whereby uh, Yoruba has a uh, strong belief about head, and we have Orinu and we have Orita. So, and uh, this, uh, this or strong belief about it and has been something that's always inspired me from time to time and you know the Yoruba believes that our head is our destiny and this is what makes me to create this piece by having a boy in his head in his hand that is like oh uh, your destiny is in your hands one of them is ranged between ages 20 to 29. They are very much the uh, next generation of young um, African artists and their works cover a number of themes from personal freedom, culture, uh, mental health, uh, religion and identity. So we have 33 works in this exhibition and works on paper, canvas, mixed media work, sculptures and photography. These 11 faces appear ready to take the world by storm and anxious to write their names in gold as they grow in the African art scene. As you know, not everyone can have a platform like that to display their creations, but that's why we have our various social media platforms. And these are the works of art you sent in this week. Let's begin with this work done by Samson. It's called African Giant. It's celebrating the artist Burna Boy. It's done with oil paint on canvas and a touch of graphite as well.
Then Moses has this oil on canvas work called Don't Stop. Then we have several pencil drawings. Let's begin with this one done by Madweke. It's titled The Coconut. Then Kia Meguru has hairstyle done with pencil and charcoal on paper. Then this pointillism is done by Harry Ome. It's called observation. Then Emmanuel is showing us beauty. A departure from the pencil and charcoal images with this one called I Love You With All My Heart is done by Godfrey. It's done by Godfrey with ballpoint pen on white cardboard paper. Then we wrap things up with this piece done by Sanusi Abdullahi. It's called Fulani Sharu. It's a metal work. And that concludes the works of art you sent in this week. We appreciate you always for sending them in and encourage you to keep them coming. Take a moment now, Art House returns with this solo exhibition. Join us again. Abstract Art Fair exhibition is an event for artists and art lovers, connoisseurs, and those who find creative expressions or who find pleasure in acquiring creative work. Basically, we're looking at people who have been able to express their work in a country that the aspects of art hasn't really been explored that much. So this is a platform to shed more light on the abstract art niche. We really don't have that, um, that window hasn't really been explored. And so this is what we're doing to explore it properly. of an artwork is more important than the finished product. Personal contact, that's how this artist has coined his latest solo exhibition at the Art Pantheon Gallery in Lagos. Autumn on my lips, powerless, the graceful cleaner, 
are just part of the works of art displayed at Personal Contact, a solo exhibition by contemporary artist Benedict Olorini Shomo at the Art Pantheon Gallery in Lagos. of the exhibition is personal contact and uh, it has to do with uh, human living and reasoning you know the things we have personally as human beings the way we carry out you know our lives you know the processes that we have as human beings for instance you have uh, a bowl of eggs no matter who you are you carry those bowls carefully even a president carrying a bowl of eggs has to be careful. So these kind of thoughtful processes in life, you know, that a personal life cannot do without, is what we are coming in contact with here. Looking at each piece, you know, reflecting on this kind of, uh, you know, process. In keeping to his mandate, the artist explores all sorts of relatable themes through the images which were created between 2021 and 2022 to evoke emotions from a personal perspective. Most of the, the works are a personal reflection of my own beliefs as well. My encounters, you know, growing up, my background, and particularly, you know, the trickles of light that I encounter in my own life journey. So these things reflect in my works, and I try to deliberately put them into my works as well. And you'll find that um, definitely I have a mother. So a lot of them come from the influence as well, my parents and the you know, personal influence of people like my mom you know, in my own personal life. He's a firm believer in the power of visuals to lift the human body, soul, and spirit. That's the reason he's painstakingly done these thought-provoking paintings to create a pathway for the viewers. Recently, I like to use the drip method because I find it a little bit more emotional using the drip method. The drip method drives home that little emotion, just added emotion to you know, the picture. And I like that as a technique. For instance, if you look at um, I Dream in Patients, you know, you find that the way the, the, the canvas accommodates the drips, it kind of sends a rainy mood. You understand? Someone going through a very difficult time, you know, and that helps me a lot. I love to, you know, emphasize using the drips. It helps in terms of beauty, pictorial beauty, and it helps in terms of emotions. basically are deep thoughts you know I like you know having a time where I can reflect and then sort of harness you know my thoughts now what am I saying in uh, late terms I think about something I want to bring out something fascinating from my thoughts I think about a human being and I want to say okay this human being is not happy how do I portray that visually and then I can come, you know, into the pictures and then bring in an object to drive home this mood, you understand? So my inspiration comes mainly from thoughts, you know. Then nature as well. I love plants and I love to mimic plant forms, you understand? Anything that looks flowery sometimes can be very inspiring and they come with a lot of colors. So I find a lot of energy from plant-like forms.
if you look at every work, there are things that we all do. There are things that happen to us every time. There are experiences we all go through. And his use of colors is just amazing. I can't, I can't actually, I wish I had all the money in the world to acquire all his works and keep them and just be looking at them for myself. I would love to do that. But this is one show that makes me happy. The works have loads of earthy tones with sprinkles of bright colors blended in brilliantly and these figurative expressions. Okay, first and foremost, like, he has, there's just no how you will see the authority of an artist and his understanding of his pigment and the way he, he did the rendition of every work here. Like, for instance, you could see different approaches to the way he paints, but uh, everything just to express his, you know, his prowess at this. So it's something that at the end of the whole day, be it, let's say, it's um, his drawing works that we have here or his painting on canvas, be it acrylic or oil paint, his mastery is just beyond thinking. Benedict is an artist that graduated from University of Ife, but has been a low key on the low key for many years. He's an artist that I have watched grow and I have watched developed and evolved over the years. But there's something about his works that really gets me hooked every time I see his works. The fine detailing of his work, the expertise, the time, the attention to detail, as well as his use of colors, they're amazing. Be the change you want to see, spread light, keep your head up. These are the words the artist is using to inspire his audience but is using his stock in trade, painting. Lovely solo show there by Benedict. And you'll be getting a good dose of that and even much more. But well, that'll be on the next episode of Art House. On the next edition of Art House. Two brothers and one lumbo. An exhibition at Coco Pelli Gallery. In another part of Lagos, we see Shout Plenty, a group exhibition organized by the African Artists Foundation. We encourage you to keep liking, sharing, and viewing our page so more people can enjoy the ever bubbly and ingenious art scene in the country. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. The curtain falls on this week's edition, but the conversation continues on any of our social media platforms. Remember to view, like and share so we can up the numbers while letting people know and enjoy the beauty of Nigerian art. I'm Melinda Akinlami, encouraging you to stay safe and keep being creative. <laughs>